Hi, welcome back to the med the um, what uh, what is meditation about Osho. Osho's thought on what is meditation, and you might be wondering what the heck happened with the last video. I left off on meditation is silence. And before I get back to that, um, I want to tell you about my meditative experience just uh, extremely recently. Meditation is guacamole dip. Meditation is mashing an avocado. Meditation is crumbled up corn chips with cheese on them and the guacamole dip. Meditation is leaving the guacamole dip in the refrigerator until it ferments and explodes all over the place and you look in the refrigerator and you have green all over the place. This is my idea of meditation. And so that much being said, I'm going to finish up with where we left off on the last one, which was meditation is silence. And let's see what Osho has to say about that, that I did not finish off last time. <clears throat> Meditation is silence. Mind means words. Self means silence. Mind is nothing but all the words that you have accumulated. Silence is that which has always been with you. It is not an accumulation. That is the meaning of self. It is your intrinsic quality. On the background of silence, you go on accumulating words, and the words in total are known as the mind. Silence is meditation. It is a question of changing the gestalt, shifting the attention from words into silence, which is always there. silence <laughs> silence is paradise <laughs> I meant to say meditation is paradise but it is the same thing I think meditation is a natural state which we have lost it is paradise lost but the paradise can be regained look into the child's eyes look and you will see tremendous silence innocence each child comes with a meditative state, but has been taught how to think, how to calculate, how to reason, how to argue. He has to be taught words, language, concepts. And slowly, slowly, he loses contact with his own innocence. He becomes contaminated, polluted by the society. He becomes an efficient mechanism he is no more a man. All that is needed to regain that space once more. You had known it before, so when for the first time you know meditation, you will be surprised because a great feeling will arise in you as if you had known it before, and that feeling is true. You have known it before, you have forgotten. The diamond is lost in the piles of rubbish. But if you can uncover it, you will find the diamond again. It is yours. It cannot really be lost. It can only be forgotten. We are born as meditators. Then we learn the ways of the mind, but our real nature remains hidden somewhere deep down like an undercurrent. Any day, a little digging and you will find the source still flowing a source of fresh waters and it is the greatest
most joy in life to find it. <clears throat> so in my opinion, um, silence is paradise in a tree watching a walking stick. Meditation is remembrance. Wherever you are, remember yourself that you are this consciousness, that you are should become a continuity, not your name, your caste, your nationality. Those are futile things, absolutely useless. Just remember that I am. This must not be forgotten. This is what the Hindus call self-remembrance. This is what Buddha called right mindfulness and what Gurdjieff called self-remembering, what the Krishnamurti calls awareness. What Moses called the great I am in the Bible this is the most substantial part of meditating to remember that I am. Walking, sitting, eating, talking, remember that I am. Never forget this. It will be difficult, very arduous. In the beginning, you will keep forgetting. There will be only single moments when you will feel illuminated, then it's lost. But don't get miserable. Even single moments are much. Go on whenever you can remember. Again, catch hold of the thread. When you forget, don't worry. Remember again. Again, catch hold of the thread. And by and by, the gaps will lessen. The intervals will start dropping. The continuity will arise. And whenever your consciousness becomes continuous, you need not use the mind. Then there is no planning. Then you act out of your consciousness, not out of your mind. Then there is no need of apology, no need to give any explanation. Then you are whatsoever you are. There is nothing to hide. Whatsoever you are, you are. You cannot do anything else. You can only be in a state of continuous remembrance. Through this remembrance, this mindfulness comes the authentic region comes the authentic morality. <clears throat> and meditation is a knack. It is the simplest art in the world to be silent. It is not a doing, it is a non-doing. <clears throat> How can it be difficult? I am showing you the way of enlightenment through laziness. Nothing has to be done to attain it because it is your nature. You have already got it. You are just so busy with the outer business that you cannot see your own nature. Deep within you is exactly the same as outside you. The beauty, the silence, the ecstasy, the blissfulness. But please, sometimes be kind to yourself. Just sit down and don't do anything, either physically or mentally. Relax. Not in an American way, because I have seen so many American books titled How to Relax. The very title that man knows nothing about relaxation. There is no how. Yes, it is okay how to repair a car. You will have to do something. But there is no doing as such as far as relaxation is concerned. Just don't do anything. I know you will find it a little difficult in the beginning. That is not because relaxation is difficult. It is because you have become addicted to doing something. The addiction will take a little time to disappear. Just be and watch. Being is not doing and watching is also not doing. You sit silently doing nothing, witnessing whatever is happening. Thoughts will be moving in your mind. Your body may be feeling some tension somewhere. You may have a migraine. Just be a witness. Don't be identified with it. 
watch, be a watcher on the hills, and everything else is happening in the valley. It is a knack, not an art. Meditation is not a science. It is not an art. It is a knack, just that way. All that you need is a little patience. The old habits will continue. The thoughts will go on rushing. And your mind is always in a rush hour. The traffic is always jammed. Your body is not accustomed to sitting silently. You will be tossing and turning. Nothing to be worried about. Just watch the body that is tossing and turning in the mind is whirling, is full of thoughts, consistent, inconsistent, useless fantasies, dreams. You remain in the center just watching. All the religions of the world have people, have taught people to do something. Stop the process of thought, force the body into a still posture. That is what yoga is, a long practice of forcing the body to be still. But a forced body is not still, and all the prayers, concentrations, contemplations of all the religions do the same with the mind. They force it. They don't allow the thoughts to move. Yes, you have the capacity to do it, and if you persist, you may be able to stop the thought process. But this is not the real thing. It is absolutely fake. When stillness comes on its own, when silence descends without your effort, when you watch thoughts and a moment comes when thoughts start disappearing and silence starts happening, that is beautiful. The thoughts stop of their own accord and you don't identify if you remain a witness and you don't say, this is my thought. You don't say, this is bad, this is good, this should be there, and this should not be there. Then you are not a watcher. You have prejudices. You have certain attitudes. A watcher has no prejudice, has no judgment. He simply sees like a mirror. When you bring something in front of a mirror, it reflects, it simply reflects. There is no judgment that a man is ugly, that a man is beautiful, that, aha, what a good nose you've got. The mirror has nothing to say. Its nature is to mirror. It mirrors. This is what I call meditation. You simply mirror everything within or without. And I guarantee you, I can guarantee because it has happened to me and to many of my people, just watching patiently, maybe a few days will pass, maybe a few months, maybe a few years. This is, there is no way of saying because each individual has a different collection. You must have seen people collecting antiques, postal stamps, everybody has a different collection. The quantity may be different, hence it, hence the time it takes will be different, but go on remain, remaining witness as much as you can, and this meditation needs no special time. You can wash the floor and remain silently watching yourself washing the floor. I can move my hand unconsciously without watching, or I can move it with full awareness and there is a qualitative difference. When you move it unconsciously, it is mechanical. When you move it with conscious, there is grace, even in the hand, which is part of the body. You will feel silence, coolness, what to say about the mind. With your watching and watching, slowly the rush of thoughts starts getting less and less moments of silence start appearing a thought comes and then there is silence before another appears these gaps will give you the first glimpse of meditation and the first joy that you are arriving home
and this is one that everybody knows in their true nature meditation is fun millions of people miss meditation because meditation has taken on a wrong connotation it looks serious it looks gloomy as something of the church in it looks as if it is only for people who are dead or almost dead who are gloomy serious have long faces who have lost festivity fun playfulness celebration these are all qualities of meditation a really meditative person is playful life is fun for him life is Leela at play he enjoys it tremendously he is not serious he is relaxed and I'm gonna at the end of this now and I'm gonna speak for myself I would insert she there the next one is meditation is not escapist the man who lives in the future lives a counterfeit life he does not really live he only pretends to live he hopes to live he desires to live but he never lives and tomorrow never comes it is always today and whatsoever comes is always now and here and he does not know how to live here now the way to escape called desire tanha that is the Buddha's word for what is an escape from the present from the real into the unreal a man who desires is an escapist now this is very strange that meditators are thought to be escapists escapists that is utter nonsense only the meditator is not an escapist everybody else is <laughs> meditation means relaxing in the moment in the present meditation is the only thing in the world which is not an escapist thing <sighs> people who condemn meditation always condemn it with the argument that it is an escape escaping from life they simply are talking nonsense they don't understand what they are saying Meditation is not escaping from life, it is escaping into life. Mind is escaping from life, desire is escaping from life. Like he said, meditation is fun. That was fun. Meditation is awareness. And remember, each situation has become an opportunity to meditate. What is meditation? Becoming aware of what you are doing. Becoming aware of what is happening to you. Somebody insults you, become aware. What is happening to you when the insult reaches you? Meditate over it. This is changing the whole gestalt. When somebody insults you, you concentrate on the person. Why is he insulting me? Why did, who does he think he is? How can I take revenge? If he is very powerful, you surrender. You start wagging your tail. If he is not very powerful, you see that he is weak. You pounce on him. But you forget yourself completely in all this, and the other becomes the focus. This is missing an opportunity for meditation. When somebody insults you, meditate. Gurdjieff has said, When my father was dying, I was only nine. He called me close to his bed and whispered in my ear, My son, I am not leaving much to you, not in worldly things. But I have one thing to tell you that was told to me by my father on his deathbed. It has helped me tremendously. It has been my treasure. You are not grown up yet. You may not understand what I am saying, but keep it. Remember it. One day you will be grown up, and then you may understand. This is a key. It unlocks the doors to great treasures. 
horse Gerchief could not understand it at that moment, but it was the thing that changed his whole life. And his father said a very simple thing. He said, whenever somebody insults you, my son, tell him you will meditate over it for 24 hours, and then you will come and answer him. Gurdjieff could not believe that this was such a great key. He could not believe that this was something so valuable that I have to remember it. And we can forgive a young child of nine years old, because, but because this was something said by his dying father who loved him tremendously, and immediately after saying it, he breathed his last, it became imprinted on him. He could not forget it. Whenever he remembered his father, he would remember the saying. Without truly understanding, he started practicing it. If somebody insulted him, he would say, Sir, for 24 hours, I have to meditate over it. That's what my father told me. And he is here no more. And I cannot disobey a dead old man. He loved me tremendously, and I loved him tremendously. And there is no way to disobey him. You can disobey your father when he was alive, but when your father is dead, how can you disobey him? So please forgive me. I will come back after 24 hours and answer you. And he says, meditating on it for 24 hours has given me the greatest insight into my being. Sometimes I found that the insult was right, and that's how I am. So I would go to the person and say, sir, thank you. You were right. It was not an insult. It was simply a statement of fact. You called me stupid? I am. Or sometimes it happened that meditating for 24 hours, I would come to know that it was an absolute lie. But when something is a lie, why be offended by it? So I would not even go to tell him that it was a lie. A lie is a lie. Why be bothered by it? But watching, meditating, slowly, slowly, he became more and more aware of his own reactions rather than the actions of others. <clears throat> and meditation is understanding. You will have to understand one of the most fundamental things about meditation, that no technique leads to meditation. This old so-called techniques and new scientific biofeedback techniques are the same as far as meditation is concerned. Meditation is not a byproduct of any technique. Meditation happens beyond mind. No technique can go beyond mind. But there is going to be a great misunderstanding in scientific cir circles and it has certain basis. The basis of all misunderstanding is when the being of a person is in a state of meditation, it creates certain waves in the mind. These waves can be created from the outside by technical means, but those waves will not create meditation. This is misunderstanding. Meditation creates those waves. It is the mind reflecting the inner world. You cannot see what is happening inside, but you can see what is happening in the mind. Now there are sensitive instruments. We can judge what kind of waves are there when a person is asleep, what kind of waves are there when a person is dreaming, what kind of waves are there when a person is in meditation. But by creating the waves, you cannot create the situation because those waves are only symptoms, indicators. It is perfectly good. You can study them. But remember that there is no shortcut to meditation and no mechanical device can be of any help. In fact, meditation needs no technique, scientific or otherwise. It is not a question of sitting silently. It is not a question of chanting a mantra. It is a question of understanding the subtle workings of the mind. As you understand these workings of the mind, 
a great awareness arises in you which is not of the mind the awareness arises in your being in your soul in your consciousness <clears throat> mind is only a mecha mechanism but when awareness arises it is bound to create a certain energy pattern around it that energy pattern is noted by the mind mind is a very subtle mechanism and you are studying from the outside so at the most you can study the mind seeing that whenever a person is silent serene peaceful a certain wave pattern always inevitably appears in the mind the scientific thinking will say if we can create this wave pattern in the mind through some biofeedback technology then the being inside will reach the heights of awareness it is not a question of cause and effect these waves in the mind are not the cause of meditation they are the contrary the effect but from the effect you cannot move towards the cause and it is possible that by biofeedback you can create certain patterns in the mind and they will give a feeling of peace silence and serenity to the person because the person himself does not know what meditation is and he has no way of comparing he may be misled into believing this is meditation but it is not because the moment the biofeedback mechanism stops the waves disappear in the silence and the peace and the serenity disappear and you may go on practicing with those scientific instruments for years it will not change your character it will not change your morality it will not change your individuality you will remain the same meditation transforms it will take you to higher levels of consciousness and changes in your whole lifestyle it changes your reactions into responses to such an extent that it is unbelievable that the person who would have reacted in the same situation in anger is now acting in deep compassion with love in the same situation <clears throat> 